welcome to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. My name is Glenn Taransky, and I'm a member of the advisory board at One Business World, the host platform for Leading Entrepreneurs of the World, which features entrepreneurs, founders, and business leaders presenting on cutting-edge topics and the latest in industry developments. Uh, our goal is to provide the global business and entrepreneurial communities with a window into the minds of those who are shaping the future of the world. Today, we're very pleased to welcome leading global entrepreneur, Martin Nightgate. Martin is the co-founder and CEO of Velox Networks, a licensed telecommunications service provider in Singapore that is extending the voice over internet protocol revolution to SMEs by offering a fully based cloud-based PBX with zero capital investment. With the rapidly growing customer base, the, cu the company was profitable within eight months of launch. Very good. Together with his co-founder, Martin has also recently established Dialogue X Limited in the UK, building a revolutionary native cloud PBX and a UCAS solution for TSPs to cater to the millions of businesses worldwide that are migrating their on-prem uh, telecommunications platforms to cloud-driven solutions. A seasoned entrepreneur with a penchant for startup success, Martin has made a career out of delivering profitable high-tech sales and communication solutions to the maritime and software industries spanning Asia and Europe. Product expertise includes CRM, ERP, CCTV, SIM card, banking, and voice over internet protocol software. Martin was the driving force behind the highly popular Nanu app that achieved dramatic growth with daily active usage rates of 18% and monthly active usage rates of over 44%. Martin, it's a great pleasure to have you with us here today. Uh, we look forward to hearing your, your presentation about the migration of legacy telecommunications to the cloud, pluses and minuses. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep an open mind and let me hand it off to you. Welcome. Very good. Thank you very much, Glenn, and, and welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. Um, so yes, my name is Martin Nygate. I'm the co-founder of Velox Networks, which is a Singapore-based uh, company. Um, and uh, yes, we're a licensed telco in Singapore, so we are a telco like Singtel, BT, AT&T, Verizon, and we are licensed to provide telecommunication services. Um, our mandate is to help companies to migrate from a physical uh, on-premises PBX to a cloud PBX. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to first of all run through a quick uh, presentation to explain the topic, and uh, then we'll go on to a 15-minute demonstration where you can actually see um, what to expect from a cloud-based telephony platform. So first and foremost, let me just get rid of this. First and foremost, uh, by way of introduction, why do we even need a telephone system? Um, we've got WhatsApp, we've got Zoom, Skype, all kinds of applications that we use on a on a day-by-day -day basis. And Zoom is another good example, which we're using right now. So why do we even need a telephone system? Well, the answer to that is actually quite simple. Um, it is still needed by every country, company worldwide. And how do we know this? Because there's not one single company anywhere in the world, including Microsoft, including Zoom, that have said, let's get rid of our telephone system and just rely on WhatsApp or just rely on Zoom. Um, every company in the world has a telephone system. And the other point of reference here, of course, is that if you take a look at your business card, if you have a look at your signature on your Outlook, um, you'll find a, your company telephone number. You might find your WhatsApp or your Zoom or some other connection. But generally speaking, everyone uses the telephone in one way or another. Now, what this means is, is that it's not mutually exclusive. You need in today's environment, you need multiple sources of communications with your suppliers and with your customers. You need WhatsApp, you need Zoom, but you also need a telephone system. Now, um, we're going to cover now two, um, uh, two criteria to, to explain to those that are less educated, what is a PBX and what is VoIP. Um, a PBX is a, a private branch exchange. Essentially, in a company, you have your phones on your desk, they connect to a box, and the box connects to the outside world. The picture that you're looking at right now is a typical PBX in a company or PABX, it's an analog device. And all of the cables that you can see, all of the spaghetti of the cables, they were there because every time you needed to install a new extension or reroute an extension, someone needed to string cables. 
And this is typically um, what's, uh, what's available to the multiple organizations uh, worldwide. Millions and millions and millions of companies still have these PBXs in some form of another or, or another. But what is VoIP? VoIP is Voice Over Internet Protocol. What does this actually mean? Well, very simply, uh, when you download a VoIP application onto your cell phone or onto your computer, you're downloading a piece of software that converts voice into data. So, for example, if you download WhatsApp onto your cell phone and you're calling someone else on WhatsApp, when you speak into the WhatsApp application, that software through a codec, through various algorithms, are converting your voice into data. The data goes over the internet to the recipient's phone. He's also got WhatsApp on his phone. And the same software converts the data back into voice. And that's all it is. It's not magic. Voice over internet protocol has been around for many, many years. And uh, um, all telcos today, in one way or another, are using VoIP. And VoIP is the future for telecommunications. Following on from this, what is the difference between an on-prem versus the cloud? What's the difference between a system that's in your office to a cloud-based system? So first of all, a little bit of background. Um, PABXs, or, or the A stands for an analog, PABXs have been around for many, many years. And about 15, 20 years ago, um, the IP PBXs came, or came out. An IP PBX is different from a PABX in that a PABX is a box like you saw in the previous picture that sits somewhere in a dust, dusty cupboard um, with all the cables connecting to it. An IP PBX is a server that sits in your server room. So with a PABX, your phone connects with a copper cable to that box in that dusty cupboard. An IP PBX, your phone connects to a server in your server room via an internet or via an ethernet cable and from there to the outside world. With a native cloud platform, there is no uh, equipment on site whatsoever. So your phone connects to the internet via your data connection and the communications work in that way. One of the major disadvantages with on-prem solutions, whether it be PABXs or IP PBXs, is it cannot support remote workers. This has become extremely important in the last two years since the uh, pandemic, where we are all working from home. You see, you have your phone on your desk in your office, and once you're working from home, you don't have access to your phone. You can do call forwarding from your desk phone to your cell phone, but that's really not very useful, particularly because you're paying for that inbound call and you use all the, lose all the functionality that you had in the office. For example, connecting between extensions, calling another um, co-worker by dialing his extension number. So since the pandemic started, we've all been working from home and the PABXs and the IPBXs, um, they were designed to work within the constraints of a physical office. And of course, they were not designed to be used um, in different remote locations. Uh, moving to the cloud is very different. When you move to the cloud, you're no longer constrained by geography, as we'll see in a few moments. So you can have your cell phone, that is your business line, and you can work from anywhere, including from home. So imagine a situation where you have your physical desk phone and your extension 1234. So you can take that physical phone with you home, connect it to your home network, and it's still extension 1234. But equally, you can have a soft phone on your cell phone or on your PC that replicates the whole full functionality of your uh, desk phone. So you'll now become completely and utterly uh, remote. You can work remotely. The past is history. Telephone lines are dead and dying. So let me explain what I mean by that. You see, in the past, your phone connected to the wall with a thin copper cable. That thin copper cable is called a telephone line. One of the greatest disadvantages of having a telephone line is that one telephone line can only convey one phone call. Hence, if you had, for example, five phone lines in your company, you could only have five simultaneous inbound and outbound calls. This is all gone now. With data, uh, there is no concept of a telephone line. All the telephone lines are being eradicated and being made redundant at the telco level. And in 10 years time, you simply won't have telephone lines anymore. Some countries, they're already simply taking them out. Instead of a telephone line, what was then with the IPPDXs, what then happened is that instead of a telephone line, you had what was called a SIP trunk. And a SIP trunk, think of it as a channel or a conduit 
for conveying a phone call between a company and the outside world. So whereas in the past you had telephone lines, they got replaced by SIP trunks, which were channels for conveying um, VoIP communications. And again, if you had five SIP trunks, you could have five simultaneous um, inbound and outbound calls. This is also dead and dying because with native cloud telephony platforms, you have what's called a multi-tenanted telephony or, or, or PBX, cloud-based PBX, where there's no such thing as a dedicated SIP trunk. So dedicated SIP trunks are also no longer relevant. We didn't have the issue of the leased lines between clo globe, uh, corporate global subsidiaries. Now, this is, this is where you have big organizations that have subsidiaries all over the world. You see, in the past, when they wanted to call their subsidiaries worldwide, they found that it was very expensive to make phone calls. So they installed what was called lease lines or, or, or pipes, if you wish, between the different countries. So you could call the different countries free of charge um, via this network. But this network is extremely expensive to maintain and to operate. And that's also dead and dying because the cost of international calls today is so cheap that the justification for having a global network for telecommunications simply goes away. I'll give an example. If I'm in Singapore and I'm calling locally a domestic call within Singapore, it's about one cent a minute. However, if I was to call from Singapore to the USA, it's less than half a cent. Essentially, that means to say that it's cheaper to call to the States than to call my next door neighbor. International call rates are today are so cheap that the justification for a global um, uh, network between subsidiaries of an organization is simply no longer viable. Exorbitant phone bills are dying, dead or dying. We don't have phone bills like we had in the past. Many of you will remember that 10, 15, 20 years ago, phone bills were very, very expensive. Phone calls were very expensive. Today, they're not. Mobile roaming phone charges. Well, even today, that happens with many of you when you're traveling internationally and you make roaming phone calls, they are expensive because you're relying upon the, the local telephone company or in whichever company you're in to transmit that phone call. Um, this is also no longer relevant because if you have a VoIP application on your cell phone uh, that replicates your business, um, your, business your business phone, the call costs are exactly the same as though you're sitting in your office. So again, for example, if I'm in America, uh, so if I'm in Russia and I'm calling the USA, it's half a cent a minute. And incoming calls are free of charge as well. So exorbitant mobile roaming uh, phone charges are also dead and dying. ISDN lines are dead and dying. But what's an ISDN line? Well, an ISDN line, uh, so for example, an ISDN 30 is simply a cable with 30 copper cables inside it. And many companies have ISDN lines to enable them to, uh, to transmit multiple simultaneous inbound or outbound calls. Everything is now data. You don't need ISDN lines anymore. They're also dead and dying. So what is the future? The future is, and the future is now, and the future is first and foremost, fully featured soft phones on your smartphones. Think of it as though it was WhatsApp on steroids. WhatsApp is consumer grade, grade VoIP application. Sometimes the quality is not that good, but with business grade um, VoIP applications, the call quality is far superior. So imagine a situation where you have a VoIP application on your phone, and when you make an outbound call, the number that's displayed is your office number. And if someone calls your office number, it'll ring on the app on your smartphone, wherever you are in the world, whether you'll be working from home or in a different country. Equally, you can have a fully featured desktop app for PCs and Macs or whatever. Um, and again, this enables you from your PC directly to make and receive phone calls. What this also means is that the, de the utilization of dedicated IP desk phones is becoming less and less. And there are two main types of IP desk phones. You have ones that connect to the LAN cable, but you also have ones that connect to the Wi-Fi. So for example, when I work from home, I use my desk, my desk phone, which is a Wi-Fi enabled phone connected to my Wi-Fi hotspot at home to avoid having to string a LAN cable all over the house to the hotspot in my living room. So there are now multiple options for working from home and taking your phone system with you. So what, is, what do we need to look for in a cloud telephony platform? 
Well, first and, first and foremost, no setup fees. There really is nothing to set up. It's all software driven. There's no on-site hardware required, no session border controls. There is no, for native, for true native cloud telephony platforms, there's no requirements for any software on any hardware um, on premises like servers or anything like that, other than the physical phone, if you wish to have one, which is of course optional. There's no installation costs. Well, there's nothing to, in, to install, no wiring. So long as you've got a network, whether it be a LAN or Wi-Fi, there's no need for any wiring. Generally speaking, the way that it works, and this is a software as a service business model, you pay per user per month a specific fee, a certain fee per user per month. Um, so if you had 50 users, 50, 50 extensions in your company, that would be 50 times whatever the license fee is per month. Custom support is very important. Uh, we don't like dealing with call centers. People really don't like dealing with call centers. Um, it's much better if you can find a telephony provider that can give you a dedicated account management, uh, manager who will know you and will know your business. It's far better than having to phone up a call center where no one really knows what uh, exactly what the customer is all about other than what appears on their CRM system. Desk phones, they should be plug and play. You simply get a phone, you plug it into your LAN cable or you connect it to your Wi-Fi and you can immediately make and receive calls. Only recently I was working out of a Starbucks and for whatever reason, I took my physical phone with me, connected to the Wi-Fi in Starbucks and immediately was able to make and receive calls in exactly the same way as I was sitting in my office. The soft phones are important. You can get soft phones today, VoIP soft phones, that you can download from the internet and they are free. The problem with these soft phones is that often they are non-supported and they are prone to hacking. So we have to be very careful to make sure that if we're using a soft phone on our PC, but particularly on our cell phones, that these are soft phones that are from a reputable vendor and to make sure that they are fully supported for all kinds of cell phones and to make sure that they are protected from hacking. The other issue is number portability. When you move to a cloud-based telephony provider, um, you can often port your number, i.e. transfer your existing phone number from your previous telco to the new provider of your cloud telephony platform. That way you retain your phone number, you retain your identity. So it's important they're able to offer um, number portability as well as to issue phone numbers. Uh, finally, if you have a call center in your company, it needs to have all the functionality available for call centers, such as the uh, ability to produce all kinds of reports on the agent's performance, um, who's available, who's not available, uh, features such as call barging, call whispering, and so on. These are also important for companies that have call centers. But a single telephony platform should be able to deliver, a cloud-based telephony platform should be able all, to deliver all the functionality you need, both for your organization in whatever country you're in, as well as globally. So um, we've now covered um, the basics of a cloud telephony platform. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through a quick 15 minute demo to show you what you can expect from a cloud telephony platform. So let me just bring it up. So imagine for a moment that you've now subscribed to a cloud telephony platform. Um, if you're dealing with a reputable vendor, they will have a self-service portal, which as you'll see in a moment is very easy to use and very easy to customize for your own specific requirements. So let's imagine you've now become our customer. We've given you a unique user ID and password and you've logged in. This is your portal. This is your company. So far, you've spent $5.78 this month. You've made inbound calls, local calls, international calls. Every time you put down the phone, that $5.78 gets updated. You always know how much you're spending. Of course, all calls between extensions are free of charge, irrespective of where the extension is. So if you're working from home and you're calling another work colleague, those calls should be uh, free of charge. And all inbound calls are also free of charge. Again, irrespective of where you're using your cell phone internationally or domestically, all inbound calls are free of charge. When you become a customer, you will be assigned X number of licenses, what say 30, 40, 50 licenses. What you need to do is you need to apply these licenses to your users. To do that, you'll click on left-hand side users. And here, on, you'll see a list of the extensions, 2000, 2001, 2002, and so on. What you can do, of course, you can customize extension numbers to your own specific requirements. 
Then what you need to do is you need to assign this extension to your user. To do so, you click on the blue button edit. And the first thing is you put in the email address of the user. Now, why the email address? In the olden days, when someone left you a voicemail, you have a flashing light and you dial in. In the world of cloud telephony platform, uh, it's very different. This is voicemail to email. In other words, when someone leaves your voicemail, it automatically sends your email address as an attachment. So you get a new email on your phone. It says, hey, you've got a new voicemail. You click on it and you listen. So rather than looking for the voicemail, the voicemail will find you. Below that is your name, and that's from the phone book. Now, this is the phone number that you've either ported over from your existing telco or that your cloud provider will assign to you. Um, and this is the number that would appear when you make an outbound call. Uh, most cloud vendors or reputable ones should be able to give you phone numbers from about 100 different countries worldwide. So if you wanted an Australian phone number, a US number, UK number, that is all doable. And this is the number that appear when you make an outbound call. Below that, 20 seconds till it rolls over to voicemail. And of course, um, you can change that. Now, everything I'm showing you should be as part of the single license fee. Some vendors will charge per feature. Other vendors will give you a flat fee and all the features are free of charge. So for example, the next thing is call recording. And we have three types of call recording. We have internal, so you can record the calls between the extensions. You can record the outbound calls and later on I'll show you the inbound calls. And on each extension, you simply enable or disable call recording. So for example, in my company, salespeople and support people, we record and management we don't. You simply enable or disable on each extension. Equally, you can enable or disable international calls. You can make international calls. This extension cannot. Finally, we have a concept called cost centers. This is for companies that have different subsidiaries worldwide or, or different departments. You can group phones by departments and bill them later on. So should you wish to have a, um, a, a cost centers, that can be set up. Once you set this all up, you're ready to go. The next thing you'd like to see is the call detail reports. Now, every single line item you see here is a phone call. From who, to who, how long the call took, and in fact, even how much each call cost. And click on the blue button recording, you can download the call and you can listen to it. So long as you've enabled it, of course, you can download the call and you can listen. At the very top, you can search for calls by extension, by date, whatever you want to do, download the calls and you can listen. Equally, you can produce any type of reports. So you can say salesman number one, I want to see how many inbound and outbound calls he made last week. And you can produce a report in Excel, CSV or PDF. The next thing we need to cover is something called call groups. What's a call group? Let's imagine for a moment that you want to set up your system so that when a call comes in, it'll ring on, let's say five extensions simultaneously. Whoever picks up a call first gets it. That's called a ring group or you can set it up. So when a call comes in, it'll go to the first extension. If he's engaged, it'll go to the next extension. If he's engaged, the next one, and so on. And that's called a hunt group. How do you set it up? Very simply, click on the left-hand side on the system setup. You click on call groups, and you create a new group. Now, you can create either a ring group that's all together, or hunt group that's one after the other. At the very bottom, you have the group members, and you can have as many, uh, and you have a new group you can have as many groups as you want. You can change them when you want to. The next thing we need to cover and the system setup is the DIDs or the phone numbers. Now let's imagine for a moment, this is the phone number that we've ported over from your existing telco or the new one that we've assigned to you. Bearing in mind that you could have multiple phone numbers from different countries if you so wished. You click on the blue button edit here. And the first thing you do is you enable or disable inbound recordings. Do you want to record the inbound calls on that phone number? Yes or no? Then what you need to do is you need to tell that phone number where to go to. And under the drop down box on routing, you can route a, a phone call to one of three destinations, to a user, to a group, or to the auto attendant. Allow me to explain. If you wanted Dennis to answer all calls on that phone number, you take that phone number, you point it to Dennis's extension, Dennis will get all the calls. We've now made up a group of let's say five extensions. You take the phone number, you point it at the group and it'll fire the group sequence, either all together or one after the other. Finally, you can take the phone number and you can point it to the auto attendant. And the auto attendant will say, welcome to my company. 
If you know the extension you want, dial it now, or dial one for this, two for this, three for this. So you can take the phone number and you can point it to fire up the auto attendant. But then the question is, how do I set up the auto attendant? Very simple, you click under system setup, you click under auto attendant, and you create a new auto attendant. Now, the first thing you do is you upload a WAV file and you create, can create that recording on your cell phone or on a PC or have it done professionally. Welcome to my company. If you know the extension you want, dial it now or dial one for option one, point it where you want it to go to. Option two, point it where you want it to go to. Option three, four, five, and option zero, point it at a receptionist. You can have a daytime auto attendant. You can have a separate one for out of hours, all driven by business hour rules. You can have press one finger two for French, completely free of charge, completely under your control. The last thing I wanted to show you on the left-hand side here, under system setup, is the fax lines. If you still utilize faxes, and some companies still do, and we port that number over or issue a new phone number, you click on the blue button edit here, you put in an email address, all incoming faxes go to that email address as a PDF. And the very last thing, so it's fax to email. And the very last thing I wanted to show you, um, if we go back to our company website, you'll notice here when it comes up on the bottom right hand corner, a button here, click here to call us. You can have a button like that on your website. And if someone is surfing your website and they want to get in touch with you, they simply click on that button and it initiates a web call from them to you. And that's a free call for them and a free call for you. And with most reputable or with some reputable uh, cloud-based vendors, everything I'm showing you is for a single license fee. And that's it. So Glenn, having uh, presented this to, to the viewers, do you have any questions or does anyone else have any questions? Thank, thank you, Martin. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the, cluttered, the cluttered closet brought back lots of memories. Uh, <laughs> It also, before we actually, I remember even at home, right, before you started to mount your TVs on the wall, right, it was always that don't look behind the cabinet because that's where all the, that's where all the wires and the cable, cables got dumped, right, as it, as it goes through. So, but I think lots of people could relate to opening up a door and seeing all of that, right, yep. just, from a, just, just from, a, from, a, from a messiness standpoint. You know, I'm a, um, I'm a big student of history, right? Um, and you, and you look at you look at the types of uh, items you've been you've been talking about here and your company, and you really what it what it strikes me is it it it, it reminds us that uh, telephony or telephones or however you want to characterize it are part of the information system, right? It's not just about data and connections. It's it's really incorporating it into 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 your information system and using it really to your to your business's advantage and really viewing it as, as an asset right and putting it to work you know kind Indeed. of you know at least that at least that's how it, it struck me uh, your dash your dashboarding there is very very impressive a Thank lot of a, a lot of a lot of you know, again lo lots of lots of information to take a look at lots of lots of ways to dissect it and i think from uh from a company standpoint, or even from a kind of a system standpoint, a very good audit trail. If you had to go back, right, and come back and say, "Oh, where did where did this come from, or, or, or where is that where is that coming from?" Right. Um, I mean, it's kind of kind of hard not to. I mean, when you have no setup fees, no no outside hardware, right, no installation, no wiring, it's kind of hard to argue with that, right? Why would why would why would anybody want to kind of be a holdout? Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here on Long Island, and and the uh, the voice over internet protocol started, I guess, with uh, our local cable company. Probably, I bet you, almost two decades ago in its infancy, right? And then, and now it's, you know, without without the the internet, generally, that's that's how people's phone calls are now being placed, right? So it's it, it's kind of in partnership with that. From a customer base uh, for your company, uh, who's the typical who's the typical customer? Well, that's that's a pretty easy to answer. People who are looking to buy, replace, or upgrade their PBX. Buy, replace, or upgrade. Okay. Uh, traditionally, these are overwhelming majority of our customers. You see, you can have a if you've got a PBX in your office, uh, it can last for five, 10, 15, 20 years. Why change something that's not broken? 
Um, I would, however, suggest here that the major vendors of PBXs, people like Panasonic, uh, Toshiba, NEC, they've actually gone out of the business because no one is making PBXs anymore. And all the conventional PABXs are no longer supported. If one of these days they break down, you'll have catastrophic failure. You won't have any inbound and outbound calls, and there's no spark parts anymore. So to answer your question, yes, our typical customer is people are looking to buy, replace, or upgrade their PBX. Who, who might be a holdout? Excuse me, people who, the holdout people? Yeah, who might be a holdout for this type of technology? Who's like, oh, this um, this is over my head, I'm uncomfortable. No, th th it's it's not, it's no longer an option because uh, all telcos are, are, are making the copper infrastructure redundant. For example, just recently in the UK, they've just announced that all the copper cables, all the conventional telephone lines are going to be taken away by, I think, 2024. Um, everyone's got to have IP phones. So the there really is not too much of an option. You've got to go onto an IP. Now, the question is whether it's an IP PBX, an on-site IP PBX, or it goes to the cloud. But essentially, the holdout people are people who already have a system in place and there's no incentive to change. It's only when they're looking to buy, replace, or upgrade their PBX. So they're looking to move to a new office and their PBX is broken down or it needs to be expanded. This is when our, they, they come to us. But equally, the pandemic has dramatically increased the, the customer base because people are now working from home and the conventional PBXs don't facilitate um, the remote workers. Well, with a cloud system like ours, they do. I'm in London right now. I have my uh, my offices in Singapore. I have my uh, app on my cell phone. I have my physical phone. And I can work here just the same way as I'm working in Singapore. It's been it's been pretty fascinating to watch kind of the reinvent reinvention here of the of the workplace the last well, going on almost two years now. Mm -hmm. On you know on on not 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 going to an office or not not checking your voicemail. We we have we have I I do get the the piece that you referenced uh, where you go from voicemail to email. I I'll get an email and uh, from from the uh, say somebody called the office number right, and then the email will pop up and I'm able to play it back and that's helpful because to be honest I don't even rem remember how to check my voicemail, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to go no. back and pass codes and things like that. Yeah, right. what we have to also understand, Glenn, is that there's significant difference between the adoption of technology in the USA, for example, compared to Europe and compared to Southeast Asia and compared to Japan, for example. Um, in the USA, uh, a lot of companies have already moved to the cloud. You have big companies in the USA that serve the USA market. Mm -hmm. Companies like uh, Ring Central, 8x8, 59 and many other companies who are very well established and they're actually growing faster than conventional telcos because everyone's moving to the cloud. But as you move away from the USA, you move into Europe and you move into Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia, it's very uncommon to find people who have moved to the cloud. It just doesn't exist. And the reasons behind that have to do with the regulation of the telco industry. You recall I mentioned right at the beginning that we are a licensed telco. Mm -hmm. Well, to be able to do what we are doing in Southeast Asia, you need to be a licensed telco. To do what we are doing in the USA or even in the UK or in Australia, um, you don't need to have any license. It's completely deregulated. And for this reason, the USA is far advanced and Europe to an extent is far advanced than Southeast Asia, for example, when it comes to the adoption of cloud-based technology. But we all know what that means. That means to say that in Southeast Asia, there's a huge opportunity. Sure, sure. But, e but even with your license, I, I would imagine that's, in those countries, that's a great calling card. That's a very powerful, powerful uh, piece of, in, you know, powerful intangible to have there as you, as you, as you kind of, you know, seek out those opportunities because you, you've got it both from a, from a whatever regulatory structure they have. You, you, you obviously have it, and then you've got the, um, then you've got the entrepreneurial side of it and saying, okay, here we go. If, 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 if you're not quite ready to do that, I'm also licensed. So here, take, you know, take, listen to me. Take my call, right? As, as we as we as we go through absolutely and one of the things that we learned from from velox and we've been doing this for about oh, five years now is what we realized that there's another opportunity here and that is to build a platform for telcos to deliver what we are delivering here to their customers you see 
We work directly with end users, with small, medium sized and even large enterprises with hundreds of users. OK, the telcos, they also need to help their customers to migrate to a cloud. And the new company that we've just established in the UK, uh, we're in the middle of building a new platform that will be a platform like you saw right now, um, which is a platform, a cloud based system, but it's designed for telcos to take this platform and offer these types of services to their customers. Because you see, every company that comes to Velox, they're going away from a telco. Telcos are losing rapidly ground. So we're also developing a new platform that will be able to offer to telcos so that they can also offer this directly to their customers rather than losing them to us, to Ring Central, to 8x8, and so on and so forth. That's fascinating because then you're, you're, you're partnering with you know, the 800 pound gorilla, right? You're out there and, and you're, you're becoming an extension uh, of them. And what a, what a, what a, what a, what an interesting kind of two-way street, you know, at that, at that, at that point in time, as it, as it plays out, you ever get, you ever get any questions, Martin, on, uh, let's call it data security or cybersecurity, given, given kind of how it, how it, how it plays out. Anything ever, anything ever come up in that area? And the, yes. And the answer is very clear. You know, that WhatsApp is end-to-end -end encryption. So are we. Uh, it's all end-to-end -end encryption now. It, it's virtually, you can't, uh, everything is encrypted, upload, ingress, download. In the same way that WhatsApp's encrypted, so are we. Uh, it's, it's virtually impossible to, to listen into calls. It's virtually impossible. Unlike with the old systems when you've got copper cables, uh, with this type of technology, it's virtually impossible. It's end-to-end -end encryption. Boy, we've come, we've come, we've come a long way. You know, I, I also, I'm a classic movie fan and one of, uh, one of my favorite movies is uh, the movie uh, Play It Against Sam. Mm -hmm. And in Play It Against, it's a Woody Allen film. And, and in it, uh, Tony Roberts plays a character, Dick Christie. Every mm -hmm. time he changes locations, he calls his office and says, this is Mr. Christie. I'll be at 752-6312 for the next 15 minutes. And then I'll be at <laughs> series. It was a series of keep checking in and going back and forth. and. Running out of running out of uh, phone numbers to 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 otherwise get right as it plays out. No, it's it's fascinating. I tell you, it really it, it's 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 putting to work and really recognizing the power of the technology, uh, leveraging leveraging your IP, leveraging the technology that you have, you using it as an information tool. Um, yep. and as I as I said, the um, yeah the uh, the dashboarding was was very very impressive. How about how about on the on the licensing fees? Now you said it's it's an it's a you know SAA uh, yeah. plat, right platform SaaS platform. So yeah. um, as you scale up on the users, is it is it the price, you, price differentials? How, how does it play out? Uh, with us, it's very very simple. We charge the equivalent around about uh, in US dollars. I think it's around about eleven or twelve US dollars per user per month for everything I've shown you. Um, and that's it. Um, of course, when you've got hundreds of users, then it comes down a little bit. But um, compared to some of the US companies who are much more expensive and don't give the functionality, yeah, with us, we charge about $12 per, $11 or $12 per user per month for everything that I've shown you. There are no other charges. There's no setup fees, no installation, no wiring, no hidden charges. That's fascinating. That that's great. That's a, I mean, I, I I look I look back on my own. I think I was the final New York telephone customer at one point, and I used to get charged. I would get my bill, and if I called Buffalo, there would be like a long distance charge for like a dollar seventeen or something, something on the bill. You know, which is of course, just, of course the US is about a cent. They're, they're, yeah. they're, and it, and remember when with VoIP technology. It doesn't matter where you call from, it only matters where you call to. So if termination calls to the States, are, let's say one cent, you can call from Russia, Germany, Singapore, Africa to the States. It's always the same price. One that's cent. Right. Yeah, no, that's right. We said we said in the warm-up, my uh, my wife is English and her brother is still in in London. So when he calls, it's 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 a WhatsApp, WhatsApp type of thing that 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 comes into her cell phone and, and then yeah. that's how they, that's how they go, that's how they go back and forth as it plays out. Any you talked about uh, kind of partnering a little bit with the with the telcos themselves. How about um, does that ever extend to like the cable companies? Yes, absolutely. We've got Could cable be, companies. right? Of course. You see, the cable companies can offer um, immediately without any investment or without any 
problems at all. They can offer telephone, they can offer telephone services immediately um, by taking this platform. Because if they're putting the connection into the office or into the domestic home, whatever the case may be, they can have this up and running within virtually no time at all. It, it's very simple. There's no, they don't need to put any infrastructure in. And remember, there's no capex, neither for them nor for anyone else. There is no capex. So it's a very simple value proposition. No, sure sounds like it. Sure sounds like it. Well, listen, Martin, outstanding presentation. You, I mean, entrepreneurial. I mean, you're 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 embodying all all that's what what gets captured in in that in in that title because for sure you're you're taking you're taking you're taking us into into the future yeah, the future is here right the future is here and, and and we're moving we're moving rapidly towards it how what's the best way for people to get in, i see on the on your on your banner here is that the best way for people to get in touch with you well, sure you can send drop me an email m.mygate at myvelops.com um you can drop me an email and i'm uh, happy to to help in any way that i can or if they're on the website, you got that call button, right? They could click right into that. And... Yeah, click on that button. You can do that right now. In fact, if you did that right now, this time of night is probably the call's going to be routed to myself. That's uh, true. Because you're, now you're, Singapore, Singapore you're, right now. So yeah, I'll you got there. a lot of time zones to manage, right? As it as it <laughs> yes. plays out. Well, listen, fascinating pres presentation. We wish you the best of luck. Um, thank you. So thank, much. thank you for for sharing sharing your your platform with us and 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 your and your business here. Uh, really really uh, impressive and we wish you the best of luck and please come back and join us again in the future okay will do thank you so much Glenn, and thank you everyone else for participating thank take you. good care of yourself thank you martin take care be well bye, bye.